What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with my thoughts and reaction to tonight's NFL opener between the Eagles and the Falcons. Eagles going to escape with an 18-12 victory, but this was not a very pretty game. Uh, it was pretty ugly, actually. And you could call it a defensive battle, and while both teams have incredible defenses, I think this was just incredibly sloppy play from both offenses. I'll go ahead and start off talking about the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan, who struggled greatly. I have not seen every Matt Ryan game in his entire career, but this is far and away the worst I have ever seen him play. Now, he was not getting a lot of help either from his receivers outside of Julio Jones, his offensive line, or more than anything else, his play calling, because Sarkeesian, I don't know what was going on there, but horrible play calling. But Matt Ryan just did not look like Matt Ryan. Even when he had time to throw it, he was missing receivers a lot. He was making some very poor reads, throwing it into coverage. I really don't know what was going on there. Had it not been for Julio Jones completely balling out, uh, Matt Ryan's numbers would look a lot worse. But they don't look good right now. 12 or 21 of 43, under 50% completion, 251 yards, but 169 of those yards are Julio Jones's. Zero touchdowns and one interception. And that interception cost him big time. The Falcons were looking to score, and it was just shy of the end zone. It looked like maybe he had a miscommunication with the receiver. Maybe he just underthrew it heavily. I don't really know what the cause of it was, but it allowed Douglas to get the interception. And that could have changed the game had the Falcons scored a touchdown there or at the very least gotten a field goal. The Eagles offense would have had to play things differently. The Falcons defense could have played things. The whole game could have been differently. Uh, could have gone differently. But, you know, could have, would have, should have. But it was a weird throw by Matt Ryan. Uh, I don't know. The play calling was absolutely atrocious, especially in the red zone. And you hear about it all offseason, how much the Falcons struggled in the red zone last year. But in my mind, I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is a very, very talented offense. Surely, as they have an offseason to go over everything they did wrong last year, they'd come out and play differently this year. Not the case at all. No creativity in the red zone. There was one play where Julio literally just ran straight down the middle just about, had double coverage on him, and Matt Ryan tried to force it to him, partly because Julio Jones was playing well, partly because nobody else was doing anything at all, but just there wasn't a juke, there was no kind of move made, it was just, I don't know, I don't know what the play calling was, but it really wasn't good at all, uh, and it I don't understand it. Uh, Devontae Freeman, six carries, 36 yards. He was playing pretty well. I don't know why you would not give him the ball more. It's not like they were trailing the whole game. Uh, they certainly had opportunities to run the ball. Uh, Tevin Coleman had nine carries for 19 yards. He really wasn't doing a great job. He did get a touchdown, but I don't know why they wouldn't get Freeman more involved, especially. Really odd to see. Julio Jones completely went off. 10 catches, 169 yards. He was targeted 19 times, but a lot of those, there was nothing he could do. It either wasn't a very good throw or coverage was just very good. And he should have had 11 catches, maybe over 200 yards. I don't know how many of these yards would have uh, come back or happened otherwise uh, after that play where they ruled it an incomplete pass. Although clearly in my mind, that was a completion. I don't see how they could say that was incomplete. I don't know. I disagreed with that call greatly. Um, and I don't know how many more yards Julio had on that drive if he had any, but maybe he could have gone over 200 yards on the night, which would have been crazy. We've seen him do it before, but he played great. All the other weapons for the Falcons, though, just vanished. Mohamed Sanu, four catches, only 18 yards. Uh, Freeman had three catches out of the backfield for 14 yards. Again, wasn't really running the ball a whole lot. Tevin Coleman, one catch, went for 26 yards, but only one catch. Uh, Austin Hooper, 3 for 24. One thing that really shocked me is they didn't really get Calvin Ridley involved. You know, they used a first-round pick on him. And in my mind, Calvin Ridley is going to get a ton of opportunities to catch the ball as defenses focus on all of the other playmakers the Falcons have. So to see Calvin Ridley just not there at all was interesting. Um, I do want to give credit to the Eagles defense though. Jim Schwartz was phenomenal. He was one step ahead 
of uh, Sarkeesian the entire time. And got to give a ton of credit for him uh, to him. But the Falcons also played sloppy. Just kind of an odd game from them offensively. Falcons defense actually played pretty well. I think they kind of started to wear out towards the end of the game. They also had a few significant injuries that I'm sure kind of messed up their plans. But overall, they were playing very well prior to the injuries and then prior to those last few drives the Eagles had. Uh, as for the Eagles, though, Nick Foles, 19 of 34, 117 yards, good for 3.4 yards per pass attempt, zero touchdowns, one interception. Uh, I kind of said it in my prediction video. He seems to be very hit or miss. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of in between with Nick Foles. And I think they got bad Nick Foles today. Again, going up against a good Falcons defense. But the Eagles were playing it super conservative outside of the Philly special, as I guess they call it now. Um, but they were playing it pretty conservative there as well. Jay Ajayi had a solid game. 15 carries, 62 yards, two touchdowns for him. Corey Clement, five carries, 26 yards. Was kind of struggling up until the fourth quarter. It was like third and two. They needed a first down. And he delivered with a 21-yard right up the middle, moving to the right side a little bit. And uh, I talked about that. I was wondering if he was going to step up and make a big play or if he was just going to have that one moment in the Super Bowl, those few moments, I should say. And he stepped up and made a big play. It's going to be interesting to see if his role expands as the season goes on. Darren Sproles, I'm a huge fan, man. He kind of reminds me of Darren, uh, not Darren, Daryl Armstrong, if you guys watch basketball at all. Just a short, scrappy guy that is going to give you his all on every play. Love the way he played tonight. Zach Ertz, not a great game. Five catches, 48 yards. Nelson Aguilar had eight catches, but only going for 33 yards. They clearly missed Alshon Jeffrey tonight, and uh, they, they definitely need him back. Dallas Goddard, the rookie, one catch, four yards. He did have that drop that led to a Falcons interception. I don't really think a lot of that was Goddard's fault. You'd definitely like to see your tight end come down with that. But the second the ball got there, the defense laid a huge hit on him. And uh, I don't throw a whole lot of blame his way on that one. Again, you want to see him bring it in. But otherwise, uh, that was just a great play by the defense. Uh, the Eagles defense killed it. The entire game, they were getting pressure on Matt Ryan. And maybe that's what phased him. I don't know. Uh, they only ended up with four sacks, but they had 13 quarterback hits, and this was this is what won them the game in my mind. Um, in the fourth quarter, as the Falcons are trying to score, the Eagles were rushing four and had everybody else in the end zone, and they were still getting a ton of pressure quickly with those four guys. And you knew that defensive line was going to be great this year, but they definitely made a big difference in this game. Uh, weird things for me tonight, again, that that call on Julio. I don't know why that wasn't a catch. There was also a call, I don't remember if it was in the first half or second half, where the Eagles were backed up against their own end zone, and Nick Foles was about to get sacked and kind of spiked the ball at his offensive lineman's legs, and for whatever reason, it was not intentional grounding. It ended the quarter, they went right to the next one, before you could really look at the play. So maybe somebody was in the vicinity, but I didn't see it. I thought it should have been a safety, but maybe I just missed saw it. I don't know. Um, but the weirdest thing of the night, the, the grand prize winner in the fourth quarter, fourth down, uh, Falcons have the ball. Matt Ryan throws the ball away. Now, an Eagles penalty gave the Falcons one more chance at it. But he threw the ball away on fourth down as the clock was expiring. What? At least, I don't care if your receivers are covered. At least try to go to somebody. You don't throw it away in that scenario. Like I said, Matt Ryan, I, that was such a wild game from him. He was all over the place. I've never seen him play that bad. Uh, I don't know. But as we move forward to next week... The Eagles, I think they're hoping to get Carson Wentz back. That would be a game changer, but they need Alshon Jeffrey back as well because without him, none of these guys were really stepping up like you would like to see. They don't have that clear-cut number one receiver, I don't think. Zach Ertz is definitely better than what he showed tonight, but they definitely are going to need Alshon Jeffrey and, of course, Carson Wentz. For the Falcons, how do they recover, man? I don't know that I have any faith at all in their offensive coordinator 
like I said, in my mind, I kind of thought over the offseason he would come back and kind of clean up his act a little bit. But tonight just showed not much is changing. Really weird play calling for me. Uh, Matt Ryan just looked frazzled. I don't know if he's going to play better next week or not. He won't be going up against the Eagles defense, but they definitely need to turn things around. Julio needs somebody else to step up. Uh, maybe it's Freeman if they actually hand him the ball a little bit more. I don't know. But they have a lot of question marks with their coordinator in my mind. But those are just my thoughts and my reaction to tonight's game. This is something I'm going to try to do a little bit more this year. Certainly, I'm going to try to do it for all 49er games. And then maybe any other game that I'm able to watch. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to watch every game this season. But the ones I watch, I'm going to try to make little videos of these. Maybe you guys like them or maybe you just want to see more Madden. I don't know, but... I'm going to try it out, see what you guys think. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a fantastic night. Later.